Good evening, everybody, and welcome to day one of the Tour de Beer. This is a Tour de France beer thing that we're going to do for the next 23 days. A different beer every day of the Tour de France. And we're going to talk about the beer because we are beer-focused here at Team Beer Guts. But there's a little bit of racing, so I'm going to throw that at you real quick. If you're here for the beer, just give me a second because we got to talk about today's stage. Day one, Tour de France. Finally back, like real racing and crowds and everything else. So here's my quick takeaways. One, it was wonderful to be able to see crowds at the Tour de France again. The excitement, the enthusiasm, and everything else. But... Crowds have got to remember to respect the race. A few years ago, this was a big pledge. Respect the race. In other words, don't put your face in the way while you're trying to take a selfie while the peloton's coming by. Two big crashes today. The first one was caused by a fan who had a sign sticking out in the middle of the road while he's trying to get the look and the sign as the, they're behind him. He gets the picture. Your picture cost people in that race. A, a huge amount of the Peloton went by. So please, please, please spread the word. And if you've seen this, any race, it could be the tour of your backyard or the Tour de France. These guys are going fast. They're going hard. Respect the race, please. Point two, another second unfortunate crash took down a lot of people. Um, so, yeah, we're going to throw some spoiler alerts at you right now. If you haven't watched your stage, I'm going to throw some stuff at you. That said, here we go. Chris Froome went down. That made me sad. He worked so hard to be able to get back to the Tour de France. At this point, don't know what his status is for tomorrow, but he went down, and he went down hard, hoping he's going to be okay. Snapped bicycles and stuff like that. That was crazy. And point three, and his ties directly into the beer... What a ballsy move by Julian Alaphilippe. Holy cow. Like a mile and a half left, like almost three kilometers left, and they're going up, I believe it's an 8% to an 11% grade. This is the finish line, heading up to the finish. They're in a group, and he takes off. I don't know where he gets it from, but I love it. I love watching his explosiveness up the hill. Other people tried to close that gap. He looked back, kind of played with them a little bit. Maybe not played with them, but knew if he could hold on as they got closer. He kicked again and put more distance between them. When I used to erase B uh, BMX, we'd be like, dial 1-800-COLLECT because he's a long-distance phone call from everybody else. And that's what he did getting day one. And the best way to get the yellow jersey is to win the first stage because you get the win and you get the maillot jaune. So a Frenchman gets day one, which brings us to our beer. Very fitting. And while I've been doing the tour de beer for a few years, I've started to get some that I always do, some uh, that I'll always do on day one. I do the same beer on the end. You'll have to follow to the end and see what beer that is. And a certain beers in between that I'll always have, as well as a whole host of new beers. But lately, this has been my go-to for day one. This is the Cronenborg 1664. It's a European pale lager, and it's French. So the Frenchman wins today. We had a French beer. It's and, and it's wonderful. It's a nice, easy drinking beer. If you look it up, it says anywhere between five and five and a half percent. The reason for that is they produce it differently in the UK than they do for other continents. So getting this here in the US, this is imported. This is a five percent pale lager. What's a pale lager? Well, let's take a look and do a little description about it as well. Pale lagers were invented pretty much taken from pale ale. And these are the people that were doing pale ale and brought them back to your uh, Germany and other parts of Europe where they were doing lots of lager brewing. And so they did lager techniques to the pale ale. So you're going to get a light color, but not quite as light as your Pilsners or your Hellas. And actually, it's kind of the birth of it, pale lager. Then your German brewers, like Spaten, probably took some of that over and started using more Pilsner malt, and they developed Pilsner. Same with Dortmunder, same with Hellas. Pale lager is sort of the birth child of all of that. So as you can see, it's a little bit darker than, say, a Pilsner, but it's a light, light kind of golden-ish color. Great big head on it. This is not the best glass. Cicerones are probably going to yell at me. Uh, whatever. It's late at night. I just got back from a party, and I wanted to make sure I got this video out for you anyway. So, pale lager. What are you going to get on the aroma here? Noble hops. 
very, very European. And something about this particular beer on the Cronenborg, um, they're using a lot of Strissel Spalt hops, and Strissel Spalt are uh, very local to the Alsace region of France. And so that gives it a very unique, you know, so you might get other noble hops, but Strissel Spalt is very specific, kind of spicy and floral, definitely has that noble character to it as well. And it's it's specific to that region. And they're using it in, French, in, in France for this French beer that I'm lucky to be able to get here. Taste-wise, super easy to drink. It's a wonderful beer. I was drinking a bunch of these while I was sitting around at a graduation party today. What You can have it with a burger. You can have it with a hot dog. You can have it while you're playing cornhole. You can just have it while you're having another beer. Simple, easy-to-drink beer that you don't have to think way too much about. That's what pale lager is for. It's for quaffing. It's for hanging around and talking to your friends. Body-wise, medium body. As we said, alcohol, 5 to 5.5%, five depending on where you get it. Pale lager is going to be in that range as well, but this particular beer, again, they do it two different ways. So, that is a little bit of beer education, and we're going to do one of these every single day of the Tour de France, so make sure that you uh, check us out, and uh, we hope that you like the channel, and if so, tell your friends. Share, subscribe, like, hit that notification bell so you knew a new, when you know a new video comes out. Blah. And you can also follow us on Instagram. There'll be pictures there as well as some other things with the link that comes to this video. So if you're looking on Instagram, you're like, oh, I want to hear this guy talk a little bit more. Here's about the beers. So, cheers to day one of the Tour de France and the Tour de Beer. And congratulations, Julien Alaphilippe. Prost.